you today. We come to say good night to our dearly departed brother for the Gilroy L. Stanislaus. Our program will follow as is printed. We will begin with the selection he has his hands on you. Amen. Has someone been designated to lead us in that song? Musician can give us another song. Yeah. Yeah. Brothers in your hands. Message in scripture will be given as follows The Old Testament by Brianna Stanislaus, the New Testament, Christian Stanislaus, the Book of the Prophet, Janiah Williams, and the Book of Lamentations, Morgan Stanislaus. And after that, we will have the acknowledgments coming from the Rock Moon Quartier Funeral. Then in my flesh I shall see God, whom 
eyes shall see on my side, and my eyes shall be whole, and not another. The word of the Lord. Sometimes you wonder why he allows you to go through what you go through. But just know he has. 
Days are filled with dark clouds, even when the sun is out. And from the top of your lungs, you shout, Will there ever be a change? What shall I do? Just know he has his hand on you. He has his hands on you. He's there. Thank <laughs> you. 
And at this time, we'll have the expression remembering Gilroy, first from Raleigh Stanislaus, then Yolanda Stanislaus, and then we'll open to anyone who will come. In deference to this reading family, we ask that you would limit your remarks to two minutes. Good morning, good afternoon. Microphone? You got it. Daphne, children of Gilroy and Daphne, I stand here representing Royce, Gilroy's sister, Madison, Madison and his family, Laura and his children. Myself, my wife, who is somewhere back here. And we all want to join in offering our condolences to you and your family. Yes, he was our brother, but he was your husband, and he was your father and grandfather. We would also like to add Doris to that, Joan, Carol, and Darren, all of whom you know. The younger folks may not know who they are, but you are familiar with who they are. Of course, my children send their condolences to Janine, Brett, Barim, and Jose. Gilroy, 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 a legend, a legend, a legend. Yes, he was. Uh, I followed Gilroy in 1960 at St. Mary's College in St. Lucia. And as soon as I arrived, I was known as T. Stan, which means the little Stanislaus. And of course, he was Go Stan. And everywhere he went, I shadowed him because he was my comforter at St. Mary's College. Gilroy did great things at St. Mary's College. He represented the college uh, in the, the Windward Islands Tournament in Grenada. And of course, I also did in St. Vincent three years later. After Gilroy graduated from St. Mary's College, he went down to his hometown of Viewfort where he was the sub-collector. Now, for us Americans who are not quite familiar with that, it's called the Met de Ville, which is French for the master of the village or the town, because he was in charge of paying people their wages after a hard day's work as the person who worked at the post office. And after that, he went on to another town they called Denry to also be the Met 
devil. And golly, he thought he was. He thought he was the master of the town. He knew everybody in the town because he paid them. And everybody knew him. During this time, he formed a band. It was called Southern Brothers Orchestra. Very proud of that. He did that extremely well. He was the drummer. And as the band progressed, they found a better person who could play drums. Better than him. So he was fired. But he still owned the band. He moved to St. Thomas. And I'll tell you, his work ethic was second to none. And his children could attest to that. He worked hard, very hard, at several jobs, like a true West Indian, having more than one, two or three jobs. And he did that well. He did well. He did very well. He sent all his children to college, and he was very, very, very proud of that. On a personal note, when I left St. Croix and joined the United States Army, he was my go-to for my Calypsos. I love my Calypsos, I love Sparrow, and of course he kept me posted with everything in you Sparrow came out with. Cassettes, cassettes after cassettes were mailed to me in my various places where I served. And I enjoyed that very, very much. He passed away on my son's birthday on the 2nd of November. And I have a feeling that there are two people currently in heaven that are welcoming, welcoming him with open arms. My father, who passed away a long time ago, several years ago, and my mom, who recently passed away in June. Now, my dad was probably in purgatory. And when my mom died in June and went to heaven, knowing the person she was, she probably interceded for him and pulled him from purgatory up to heaven. And they are both welcoming our brother, our, our father, our husband, Gilroy, to heaven. May he rest in peace. family. I am the daughter-in-law of Stan, the man is what I call him sometimes. He was also known as Dada and Papa. I have so many things I want to say. First, I'd like to first give honor to the Lord. The Lord brought us here today. And I want the family to know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So try to find peace and comfort in knowing that your father, your husband, your grandfather is in heaven with Jesus. Can you imagine what it feels like to walk the streets of gold? Can you imagine what it feels like to have no more pain? Can we imagine what it feels like to have no more hurt? Stand the man with the plan. He's there. He has no pain. He's, he remembers us. He's smiling down on us. And he's proud of his family. I also want to talk about love today. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not rude. Love is not boastful. Stan was the patriarch of his family. He brought us together. Every Saturday, we went over to Mommy's house. We ate. I didn't bring anything, but I ate. I ate very well, as you can see. He brought us together. Also, I want to say when I met Stan, 
in 93. Um, it said Lucia for our first vacation. It was just a meeting. But when we got married, Stan moved here. And let me tell you about him. Stan, these are my youngest family. So if I have it wrong, please forgive me. They were in the school. They lost the roof of their house, if I'm correct. I may be wrong. But in the storm, he lost everything. He packed his family up, mommy, Gaffney, and he came to his sons. He came to Virginia to live with his sons. He lived with us for 90 days. 90 days. I can't count his money, but 90 days. This man got an apartment, furniture, food in a house. Didn't ask for anything. He did that on his own. I didn't even know he was looking for an apartment. He didn't have a car. He learned the bus system. And he did that. He got a job at uh, Montgomery Wharf. He walked to work sometimes. He caught the bus. He didn't ask for anything. He was a proud man. A very proud man. But he took care of his wife. Mommy, over 50 years with that man. Amazing. Wonderful. I commend you and him. Because you did it. Till death do us part. You did it. You did it. Through good, through bad, through richer, through poor, through sickness, and in health. You did it. You hold on. You hold on to God and change me. Now I want to tell you about inheritance. Inheritance. Stan could not leave his children a house. He could not leave you a car. He could not leave you an insurance policy. But what he left you was love. Not only did he leave you love, he left you perseverance. He left you a legacy. He taught you all how to be a man. He taught you when things went wrong, things didn't happen the way you want to, while you stood up. You took care of your children. I commend you. Johnny, I'm married to John. And I watched this man struggle over the years but he didn't give up we ran into some mortgage issues he didn't give up he wanted a job at the government he applied they denied he applied they denied i intercepted those letters but he didn't give up perseverance is what you got from your father and as children it's just we learn from our parents just how do I explain this? We learn from our peers just by watching them. You watched your father. And that's what I see in you all. What you have done from you. Gaffney, I commend you. I know it's hard. You were there. You took care of your father. You're taking care of your mother. Be encouraged. I know this is extremely hard for you. Making the sacrifices that you have made. And I just want y'all to know that I love you all. And I know Stan is very, very, very proud of his family, his grandchildren. Christian, you want to say Stan loved all his grandchildren. Stan had uh, three boys and a girl. But the grandkids, four girls and a boy. So Christian, he loved them all, but had that little special place in his heart because he was the only boy and just take note that papa love all of you be encouraged is there anyone else now we're going to call on Daphne Sanders Moss to come and to give us a prayer of comfort. all those whose hearts today overflow with grief. 
unanswered questions and such a sense of loss. Grant them space to express their tears. Hold them close to the upcoming days. Please pray and carry these precious people in their sadness and loss. We ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus.
this time we'll ask that John and Raleigh will come for the eulogy. And after that, we'll have a few words and conclude our service. down. It's a moment you want to speak from the heart. There's so much that I can say about that man. Father, we have a heavenly father and we have an earthly father. Someone who gives us life. This is the man that gives me life. Gilroy, Dada, Stan, Papa, Pops, Man of the first, he had a uh, he had a way of playing around, joking around with a Christian. They were both born on the first of the month, um, February first for him, June first for Christian. And uh, you heard LP say that every time we visited them, he always greeted Christian, Man of the first, Man of the first. As much as uh, I don't want to forget anything, please forgive me if you see me grieving because I don't want to forget. You know, this is a day that no family member wants to plan, but it's a part of life. And here we are. We all have that day that we're born, that day that we pass, and there's some dots in the middle. And those dots in the middle determine how we live our life. And when that day comes, we want God to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Welcome home. And I know that he is, that God allows drinking in heaven. He may be having a long gate. He may be having a McGregor scotch. Whatever it is that uh, God allows them to do there. But I know he's happy and he's looking down on us. He's smiling and he's at peace. He's at peace. So first I want to thank you all for coming out today to celebrate the memory of an amazing husband, a father, a brother, a grandfather, and a friend. You know, I cherish the memories that I had with my father and know that he's smiling down on us. I think the, uh, the key today is going to be to talk about love. And so today I want to celebrate love. You know, when I think about my father, I think about love. You've heard that already. You think about love. The love that he had for God as an acolyte. And I hope I pronounced that correctly, an acolyte. Um, you know, the, and the love that he had for his family, and the love that he had for the game of Scrabble. You know, there, there's several Saturdays we would come over and visit, and he would be upstairs on the computer playing Scrabble. And, uh, so I want to remember this love in the form of a poem by William Shakespeare, and how this poem depicts love. The love that he had for all of us. It's Sonnet 116. It's something I learned many, many moons ago my high school days and it sticks with me till today it says let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments love is not love which alters when an alteration finds or bends with the remover to be removed oh no it's an ever fixed in mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken it is a star to every wandering bark whose words unknown although his height be taken Loves not time's fool, the rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his three thousand weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error, 
and upon me proved, I never read, nor no man ever loved. Again, this is Sonnet 116 by William Shakespeare, and, and when you listen to those words, you're like, well, what does it mean? I think the sonnet, um, you know, it, it attempts to define love and what love is by telling both what it is and what it is not. In the first sentence, you hear Shakespeare says that love is the marriage of true minds. It's perfect and unchanging. It does not admit impediments. And it does not change when it finds changes in your loved ones. Love does not change. 52 years of marriage, love does not change. In another part of the sonnet, Shakespeare tells what love is through a metaphor. It's a guiding star to all ships that are wandering barks. It's not vulnerable to storms. It looks on tempest that is never shaken. And yet another part he describes what love is not. It is not responsive to time. Though beauty fades in time as rosy lips and cheeks within its balance of its compass come. Love does not change with hours and weeks. Instead, it bears it out even to the edge of the, to the edge of life. Love bears out. In the poem, Shakespeare attests to his certainty that love is, as he says, if his statements can be proven in error, that he has never written a word, nor has any man ever loved. I look at the love between my mother and my father. I look at my mother. I wish I could be half the man that he is. Taught his kids well. Taught his kids well. His children, his stepchildren, his grandchildren, he taught as well. In closing, I like to say to my family, you know, Luke chapter 1, verse 1 says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. If we as a family can put our trust in God, we can and we will get through anything. As we continue without Him on this journey called life, we have to take the good with the bad. Smile big, smile big, smile big, smile big when you're sad. Love what you still have and remember what you have. Always, always, always forgive, but never forget. Learn from your mistakes, but never regret. People will change, things will go wrong, but always remember this journey called life will always go on. I received a uh, sympathy card from the mother, very dear friend. Um, it's a poem by Jessica St. James, and it reads, Love lives longer than grief of pain. All other things pass, but love will remain. A bond that nothing can sever, because love, love lasts forever. I love all of you. I love you. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. I love you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Okay, for those who don't know me, and this is all family, so everyone should know me. I'm John Stannis Lost Podcast, the youngest son. Um, I'd like to tell you something about my father. If you 
you don't know. Who was Gilroy Stanislaus, you may ask? I'll tell you who he was. My father was a man of substance. He was a man of faith. He was a man of perseverance. And he was very strong-willed. How did he live his life? He lived his life as a father and a provider. He was an exemplar. When I say an exemplar, he taught me a lot of lifelong lessons that I still share today. From my father, I developed the phrase, always accept the unacceptable, always expect the unacceptable, and you will never be surprised. So there are a lot of things in life that come by, and there's nothing you can do about it. But if you understand, like Ronald said, it is life. You have to push on. The dictionary defines substance as the physical matter of which a person is made. All of the characteristics I just mentioned is what my dad is made of. If you were to judge a man based on his substance, my father would have left an indelible mark on everyone and each and every one that he came in contact with. He was a man of faith, as prayer was a part of his everyday life. He believed in God and His Word and all the promises God had for him. Therefore, I know he's in a better place, and I'm going to tell you why. I was expecting a storm out there today, but guess what? The sun did shine. Didn't it? Okay, so the sun came out and the sun shined. So I know he's in a better place, and he's looking out and looking down on us. Perseverance. I heard somebody mention that about my dad today who said perseverance. That's exactly who he was. That is one of his greatest attributes, his perseverance. He would work hard to uh, reach his goals and take advantage of all and any opportunities that was forwarded to him. He was a dreamer, and he had plans in life. His dreams and plans came to fruition by watching his children grow and watching his grandchildren and most importantly, taking care of his family, as any provider would do. Making sacrifices when he had to, and he did make a lot of sacrifices in life for everyone. Not even putting himself first, but he decided to make a lot of sacrifices for everyone. This is how I remember my father. He was strong-willed and believed in what he believed in. We would often argue that and, and agree on some points on many days over a glass of alcohol. Uh, I remember those days we would talk and we would talk and we would talk. And what he believed in, he believed in. He's a very strong-willed man. My father would call me Kunya. And uh, pardon me for where I am, and you guys can understand, he would call me Kunya, and I would call him Roblox. So, I would let you guys figure that out. My father had a very strange and great sense of humor. One of the craziest things I remember my dad doing was every time he would get a new wallet, the old wallet, he would cut out little notes and say, oh, well, congratulations, you found a wallet. Here's some money. He would put these little notes in there and he would stand on the porch and he would drop the wallet on the road and see him walk by to pick that wallet up. And just the expression on the person's face because it was a thick wallet, but all he did was leave notes in there for them. And he would get that smile on his face and I would learn from him. So he was a man of great, uh, a great sense of humor. So even though today is a very sad occasion for the family, it is also one that is a happy one. I say it's happy because I had the opportunity of celebrating my dad's life. So that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to celebrate his life. He was a great man. I won't shed any tears for him because he would not ask me to, nor would he ask anyone to do that for him. So, uh, he would not want you to be sad, but to smile and think of the impact that he may have had on your life. 
If I could possess any of the characteristics I just mentioned about my father, it would be very minute reflection of what I would hope to be in life as I keep going on. So, I think of my father, I think of love, I think of life in my heart, and I know he will always be around. So let's celebrate his life, and remember the times we had with him. In the end, all we have is memories of him. And like my brother said, we will cherish those memories. Thank you all for coming. God bless you. Will be very brief today. I would invite you to a very familiar passage of scripture found in the Gospel of John, John chapter 14. Amen. You will find these words recorded. Recorded, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Holy Scriptures. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I read for you the first six verses of the 14th chapter. May God bless this word this bereaved family. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time just to gather. Thank you for the many wonderful words and memories that have been shared concerning Brother Gilroy Stanislaus. Now, Father, lead us and guide us. Lord, we pray that this word might be a soothing balm to this family. They might find their solace and their consolation and comfort in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. This is probably one of the most famous passages of scripture that's been heard at many, many times. I can remember growing up as a little boy in Virginia. I'm looking forward to talking to these Virginians after this. And in the Sunday school annex, there's a picture on the wall that was painted by my aunt, my dad's sister. And it had these verses, let not your heart be troubled. And it showed Jesus walking on a raging sea. Listen, there are times in our life where we'll even find ourselves shaken to the very core. But Jesus does promise us today peace. He promises to walk with us through this veil of tears and of sorrow. Jesus begins and the first verse says, Let not your heart be troubled. We need those words in times like these because there is indeed a peace that he provides. Amen, a peace that he provides. Some people try to find it in a pill. Some try to find it in a potion. Some try to find it in illicit relationships. But the peace that you need in this life can be given to you only by Jesus. The words in Isaiah 26, 3 said, I will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Amen. Jesus repeated on a later occasion. He says, my peace I give you, not as the world gives you. He said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. There is a peace today that he provides. Jesus goes on and he says today that in my father's house are many mansions. Not only does he provide peace today, but there's a place he has prepared. And I got good news for you today. Or bad news, depending on what perspective from which you see it. Amen. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Amen. You're not going to lay down uh, in life and stretch out in death and one day wake up and Wow, I'm here. <laughs> no, you'll be there because you planned on being there. It's because you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your life and to be your Lord and your Savior. There's a place he's prepared. In my house are many mansions. You know, some people say, well, he meant apartments, or he meant condos, or townhomes, whatever it is. He meant because he is there, I want to be there also. There's a place that he has prepared. Uh, I was in my second year of college, 
at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And that fall, there was a man by the name of Jim Jones. He had taken a group of people from San Francisco to the jungle of South America in Guyana. And he told them, in order to get them down there, that he was going to build heaven on earth. You may live in a palatial domicile. Man, you may drive a real fine and magnificent vehicle to chariot. Amen. But this is not heaven. Amen. Amen. All this rain and storm reminded me of this week. It's not heaven. Last night, you know, half of my electricity went out. And before I came up here to share with you today, the other half went out. So I'm believing and trusting I'll have some electricity when I get it. This is not heaven on earth. 240,000 people dead because of the corona pandemic. This is not heaven on earth. Amen. Stock market crashes and financial upheaval. This is not heaven on earth. Amen. Jesus has promised that there's a place that he has prepared. Man, we used to sing an old song. It says, I want to go where Jesus is. Man, there's a peace he has provided. There's a place he has prepared. But he lets us know in verse number 6 when he said to Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. No man, no woman, no boy, no girl comes to me except through me. Amen. Now, I know we don't do corporal punishment like we used to. Amen. But I grew up in a time when your parents would get you and they didn't just promise you either. Amen. I don't know what my neighbor had done one day, but his father stood in the door and he told his son, come by me. Amen. He couldn't go out the back door. Amen. He couldn't go out the side. Amen. He had to come by his father. When he did, his daddy was working on him. Amen. Listen, we don't have to look at it in a negative way of having received corporal punishment as a child growing up. But if you're going to get to heaven and get to that peace he has provided. Amen. And the place he has prepared, you will get to that because you go by Jesus. Amen. I am the way. Amen. I love words. Amen. The Greek word for uh, way is olos. I don't know what olos is, Reverend Rell. Yeah, but you know the second book of the Bible. Ex olos. Amen. Meaning the way out. Amen. Jesus says he is the way in. Amen. Today. He says I am the truth. Amen. Uh, 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 truth is more than a proposition today, brothers and sisters. Truth is a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. I am the life. Amen. There are two types of life mentioned in the Bible. One is bios, B-I-O-S, which you get biology. We all understand that. Amen. But the other word, amen, you know, one of the most, a lot of nice things have happened in my life, but I had a couple who named their little child Zoe, Z-O-E, because I told them that it was a special kind of life that Jesus talks about in the scripture. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, Zoe. No man comes to the Father except through me. So today, amen, as we come to celebrate the life of Brother Gilroy Stanislaw, there is a peace that God has provided. There is a place that he has prepared. And there is a path that he has prescribed. We would do well if we would simply walk there in. God bless you today and may heaven smile upon you. And retain those warm, loving memories of your loved one. They will carry you a long, long way. I've been told that we're going to celebrate our uh, committal here. If those of you who can stand, we'd ask that you would do so. At this time, if you are able to stand, you do so. Amen. In as much as pleased Almighty God and His wise properties, take out of this world and soul without a cease, brother, for the pure heart status law, he will more commit his body. To the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking to the general resurrection of the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at whose second coming to judge the world, the earth and sea shall be what they did. The bodies of those that sleep in him shall be made like his own glorious body, whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. Then I, John, heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Light, blessed are the God which I am the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their knees, and their works do follow me. Let us look to the Lord to receive our benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling, who sent you forth is to pour his turn with exceeding joy. To the only wise man, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Let the children of God say together, Amen. God bless you today. And may God bless you. When I am gone, release me, let me go. I have so many things to see and do. You mustn't tie yourself to me with tears. Be happy that we had so many years. I gave you my love, and you can only guess how much you gave me in happiness. I thank you for the love you each have shown, but now it's time I traveled on alone. So grieve a while for me, if grieve you must, then let your grief be comforted by trust. It's only for a while that we must part, so bless the memories within your heart. I won't be far away, for life goes on. So if you need me, call, and I will come. So you can't see or touch me, I'll be near. And if you listen with your heart, you'll hear all my love around you soft and clear. And then, when you must come this way, alone, I'll greet you with a smile and say, welcome home. <laughs> 